Hi everyone, Happy New Year. I'm so excited for 2021 and I'm starting this year with a low buy challenge. I'm so excited because I've spoken to some of you already and you guys are interested in doing this challenge with me. And to be honest, I've already started to really slow down my shopping, but I wanted to make it official and share my whole experience with you throughout the year. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you a guide on how you can achieve a successful low buy year. First, I want to share with you some personal reasons on why I'm doing this challenge in the first place, some tips that you can implement to have a successful experience, and of course, I will be sharing with you some rules that I set for myself. If you like content on minimalism and slow living, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel for more videos. Without further ado, let's get started. My biggest motivation for doing a low buy year is to change my shopping habits for the long term and redefine what success means to me, my values, my priorities, how I spend my time without depending on material goods. The biggest realization for me came when I started to declutter my home. While I was going through piles of clothes I didn't even wear, old college books, trinkets and souvenirs, home decors, I realized how I put this unnecessary burden on myself. It was exhausting to sort through all of this stuff that I had accumulated and I knew that something had to change. I had to change. As much as I would like to blame the advertisements, at the end of the day, it's on me as the consumer to control my habits and be in charge of my own decisions. Of course, this is easier said than done because it is incredibly difficult to break that cycle, but wanting to change my lifestyle and consumer habits outweighed the benefits of continuing down this materialistic path. Honestly, I just want to enjoy what I have because I have more than enough. I just don't want to feel any less because I'm not constantly adding things to my closet or to my beauty routine. And this is probably one of my biggest motivations. And of course, I have an external motivation, and that's because there's a direct financial benefit to doing a low buy year. Luckily, my husband and I don't have any credit card debt or any consumer debt in general, but we are trying to pay off a 35,000 home equity line of credit and save at least 15,000 by the middle of the year. Every month, I would love to do a low buy check-in and share with you guys what I spent my money on, how much I spent, and just to keep myself accountable and share this experience with you. I just want to mention that I'm in a place in my life where I'm able to do this challenge because I have all the clothes I need, I have all my go-to beauty products and skincare products, all the tech gadgets that I could ever want. So I don't need to add anything more. But if you are in a place in your life where you're starting a new family or you are moving to a new city, then it's probably not the right time for you. And please don't feel bad for not being able to participate. However, if you are interested in doing this challenge with me, I want to share with you some tips that you can implement to have a successful experience. First thing we should do is study our habits. I think it's incredibly important to know yourself, your habits, lifestyle, and make the rules accordingly. You can look at your credit card statements or bank statements, receipts, browser history. This information will be valuable for when we make our rules because we will know exactly what is our problem area. Second, 
And probably the most important is to know your purpose. Are you doing this to pay off a debt or just because you want to change your excessive shopping habits? Establishing your purpose is the core of anything and this will fuel you throughout the year. Next is to remove any temptations. Disabling autofill, PayPal, unfollowing influencers, unsubscribing from brands and companies who want to make you shop. Creating a friction with the trigger and temptation is going to help us set ourselves up for success. And a good question to ask yourself is how are you going to measure your progress? Are you going to have an accountability partner, keep a journal or a spreadsheet? So after you have asked yourself these questions, you can now set your rules and also create a budget for yourself. Because our priorities, lifestyles, and finances look completely different, this is going to look different. You can make it as specific as you like, for example, just restricting yourself to a certain category, not buying shoes or clothing for 2021, or you can make it as broad and general as you would like. Just to give you some ideas, here are some of my rules that I set for myself. So my number one rule is that I'm only replacing worn out clothes or empty products. This is crucial for me because I have a tendency to buy things even if I have the same exact thing at home or buy a new product even if I'm not done using the previous product. So this is going to help with my impulse purchases and also make sure that I don't accumulate clutter in my home. The second rule I set for myself is that I'm only going to dine out with friends and family. This is because I want to enjoy more home-cooked meals, but also when we do go out, it's going to be such a treat and not something that we spend excessively uh, on a regular basis. The third rule I set for myself is that I'm going to give myself seven days to wait before I make the purchase. This is really going to slow down my impulse purchases and make sure that I am so much more careful with my purchases moving forward. And if I'm going to buy something, of course, I will always check ethical brands, local businesses and secondhand shops first. This is important because the whole point of doing a low buy is to be more careful and to put a little extra thought into my purchases. So if I can, I want to support business practices and ethical practices in companies that I truly believe in. A little rule that I set for myself is that gift giving and also receiving gifts do not count. Last but not least, I'm allowed to invest in appreciating assets. So whether this is books or buying stocks or investing in education, I'm not depriving myself of this or restricting myself in any way. To help guide you along, I posted my low buy rules on my website at malama-life.com and also posted a blank template for you to fill out your own low buy rules. Over the couple of months, I'll be sharing lots of resources on my website as well. Not only do I want to do a monthly check-in, but I also have so much content planned for this year to keep us on track to have a successful low buy year. So things like having a capsule wardrobe, how to take care of our things and take care of our clothing, how to meal prep, fitness routines, and other things to kind of steer us away from a materialistic path, more towards a meaningful and fulfilling life. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you guys will do this challenge with me. I know that I'm only posting once a week on YouTube, but if you want to follow me more real time, then you can go ahead to my Instagram at Malama Life, where I will be checking in more frequently on my low buy journey and giving you lots of resources and inspiration for this low buy year. So thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, take care.